So, Hope, I, I can't start the event without saying you were born in a terrific year for football, 66, weren't you? Yes. You were born in 1966. Yeah. Don't worry. It's not this is your life. How old am I? Don't, 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 <laughs> don't panic. Um, but I wonder if you could give us a flavour of your childhood in South London, just so, so we can have a flavour of why you have such a great love of football. Uh, can I remember that far back? Um, yeah, I think um, I grew up um, on an estate with, with boys, um, predominantly, um, have a brother, and we were always playing out on the street. And I think in those days it was, it was safe. Well, it appeared safe for children to go out and play on the street um, till all hours. And I, and I just think there were, I just remember a football always being available. Um, and it just really started off as, as street football, playing with the boys. I just got a love of, I had a love of sport, but football in particular, I found it very easy. And it, and it was quite um, refreshing. I was better than, if I say so myself, I was better than most of the boys. And it, it just really went on from there. And I think as I got older, um, and I ended up playing football for an organized football team, Mill Lionesses, I, kind of decided I would like to be a professional footballer um, at the age of 11 and then realised, oh, actually, I'm, it's not possible um, being female. So I decided to go, thought, I, I really want to get paid in the sport. So that's when I decided to go down a coaching route and just thought, well, at least... And, and some people say to me, you know, coaching, is it about giving something back? And Well, at the time, no, it wasn't. It was absolutely about being involved in football and being paid and work in football, so it was purely selfish reasons yeah. at the time. Not now, but what is actually. <laughs> <laughs> now, we call this event Breakthrough Leadership, and, and when it comes to you, you have broken through on many occasions. Mm. So you were the first woman to be appointed manager of the, mm. the women's team, the first full-time manager, mm. the youngest manager, the mm. first woman to get a UEFA pro licence. Mm. You've consistently broken through mm. barriers. What, what pushes you to keep pushing those boundaries? Um, I think there are a couple of things, actually. I think um, I always want to be better. Not, not, you know, for me, if I'm better, the sport is elevated, the sport becomes better. But I also think the people that, that um, I, I've worked with who have employed me, I have to mention Howard Wilkinson, who actually employed me in the position at the FA. He was the one that sort of, certainly with my pro licence, um, Right, you're going on a pro, this pro license. Okay, why? Well, because you have to. Okay. And then I said to him, do I really have to do this? Yes, you do. So he kind of, do it. It will be good for you. And I think I've always had people around me giving me some guidance and, you know, pushing me in the right direction to strive and become better at what I do. So I think the position has allowed me to progress and move forward and, and you know, given me opportunities that perhaps other people haven't had, and it's allowed me to be the first yeah. to do many things. Now, you took over England in 1998, so if people remember back at the time, the men's team was managed by Glenn, Glenn Hoddle. Yes. And there's a whole series of managers that um, you, you've Glenn seen and... you know, come and go. Yeah, yeah there's been a um, few. Kevin Keegan. Yeah. Um, Spain. Right. Lots, <laughs> lots and lots. Fabulous. And then obviously we've recently yeah. had Roy, Roy Hodgson yeah. appointed. But what people probably won't know is that you've managed more England games than any other England manager in history. And you overtook Sir Walter Winterbottom. Yeah. You mm. managed from 46 to 62. What does that mean? How important is it that, uh, that you achieve that? Um, I, I didn't realise until it was obviously highlighted. It, it, it feels like I've been doing the job a lot longer. It, it, it isn't easy. It is hard work. As, as everybody in this room, if you're in that sort of managerial and leadership position, it is, it is challenging. Um, I, I think the, it, it's very, women's football, the environment of women's football is very different to men's football. Thankfully, at the beginning of, of my career as a manager, it, it wasn't results orientated. So had it have been, I think in my first year, I would have probably got the sack. So it, the time has allowed me to you know, develop a program, put, put people in place. Um, it's allowed me to build and build year in, year out. And I think the, the position I'm in in women's football, it isn't about, well, it wasn't when I first started results orientated. It was about building a program, a sustainable program, 
in the hope that we could become better and better and better. Um, and that's why I've been able to be in this position for this amount of time. And it is, it is very, um, you know, we, we, we're striving for new things, new challenges. We're allowed to develop new things, new concepts, new ideas, philosophies. So it's no day is, is the same. And to be honest, the 14 years, it, 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 every day feels new because there's always a new challenge in the yeah. environment I'm in. Mean.